Your Impinger oven is a major investment in guest satisfaction. You can increase the life of that investment and reduce component failure and the downtime associated with it by following some simple guidelines for operation and periodic cleaning. This tape should be used in conjunction with your Lincoln Impinger 1300 series countertop installation and operating instructions. Keep these manuals and refer to them and follow all safety precautions as outlined in these manuals. Follow this procedure for operating your Lincoln Impinger ovens. To start the oven, push the ON switch to ON. Next, check to ensure the oven dial positions are set for the correct temperature. The indicator light should come on. Check to ensure the conveyor belts are operating at the correct speed. If not, adjust the belt speed by turning the speed control dial until the speed you wish is showing on the dial scale display. Allow 30 minutes for the oven to preheat. If necessary, after the preheat, adjust the oven temperatures and conveyor to the final desired settings. To shut down the impinger, push the on switch to the off position. Caution! Oven walls and parts are still very warm. Maintaining your impinger oven involves a simple daily cleaning routine, a thorough weekly cleaning, and a few special projects every month. Daily cleaning is a simple process. First, using clean water and a non-caustic degreaser, wipe the outside surfaces with the grain using a clean, soft cloth. Then, rinse with clean, warm water. Polish with a stainless steel cleaner. Always wipe with the grain using a soft cloth. The next daily job is to clean the conveyor belt. Brush it with a special wire brush, like the Wherever 369217. Next, remove the crumb pans. Crumb pans are on the extended conveyor only and the takeoff shelves or end stops. Wash with a non-caustic degreaser and rinse with clean water. Make sure the oven is at least six inches away from walls and combustible materials. Let's review. Daily cleaning list. We cleaned and rinsed the exterior. Then we cleaned the conveyor belt with a wire brush. Then the conveyor crumb pans and takeoff shelves or end stops. And check the area for combustible materials. Thorough cleaning of the oven is a weekly task. Weekly cleaning includes fingers, conveyor and baffles, and the air intake vents. This process should take about an hour per oven. You'll need an oven non-caustic degreaser, mild solution soapy water, three to five gallon bucket of warm rinse water, an oven brush, four or five dry towels, and a three compartment sink with faucets. A spray hose would also be helpful. You'll need a long sleeved cotton shirt, a pair of goggles, and rubber gloves. With your goggle and gloves on, you can start your weekly cleaning. The first weekly cleaning task is removing and cleaning the conveyor and end baffles. Remove the end baffles by turning the thumb screws counterclockwise. Spray them with the non-caustic degreaser and allow them to sit while cleaning the conveyor. To remove the conveyor on an Impinger 1300 series countertop oven, remove the external crumb trays, extended conveyor only, and takeoff shelves if applicable. Hold the spring-loaded coupling and pull it away from the conveyor. Then lift the conveyor so the locking bar is clear. If the conveyor won't release easily, lift the opposite end and push. We'll clean the conveyor over a three-compartment sink. Using a three-compartment sink, we're going to start using our non-caustic degreaser. Spray the entire conveyor assembly with non-caustic degreaser. It'll take about 20 minutes for the grease to dissolve. Then rinse and allow to dry. While you're waiting for the degreaser to soak, you can remove and clean the fingers. The end panels can be removed by turning the quarter turn fasteners and lifting panels from the retaining tabs. Spray the end panels with non-caustic degreaser. It'll take about 20 minutes for the grease to dissolve. Remove the top fingers first by lifting up from the front hanger and pushing toward the back of the oven. Then drop the finger down towards the center of the oven and swing the finger housing out of the oven cavity. Next, reach in the oven cavity and remove the top air return baffle. 
Remove the bottom fingers next by also lifting up from the front hanger and pushing toward the back of the oven. Then lift the finger up toward the center of the oven and swing the finger housing out of the oven cavity. Next, reach in the oven cavity and remove the bottom air return baffle. Now disassemble the finger housing for cleaning. Slide the finger cover from the housing. Lift out the inner columnating panel. Spray the finger covers with non-caustic degreaser and allow to sit for 20 minutes. Wash the end panels, finger housings, columnating panels and air return baffles in warm soapy water in a three compartment sink. Rinse off all the parts with clear water until they're thoroughly clean. Then just stand the parts up to air dry. While you're waiting for the fingers, air return baffles and conveyor to dry, you can clean the inside of the impinger oven. Now that the fingers are out, you'll be able to clean more thoroughly. Use a non-caustic degreaser. Do not use a caustic oven cleaner or degreaser on the oven interior. Don't forget to clean the outside too. Non-caustic degreaser can be used for spot applications on the outside of the oven if needed. Rinse with clean water inside and outside when finished. Clean all the vents and louvers that are on the right hand and rear of the oven. The parts you washed should be dry by now, so let's reinstall the air return baffles and put the fingers back together. Reinstall the top and bottom air return baffles in the proper locations. With the outside metal lip facing up, nest the columnating plate securely inside the finger housing with the small notch toward the narrow end of the finger housing. Slide the cover over the finger. Now we can reinstall the fingers. Make sure the top finger housings are fully seated around the plenum flanges and secured in the front on the hanger. The bottom finger housing should be about a quarter of an inch away from the front wall of the oven. Make sure the holes in the columnating plates align with the holes in the finger covers. The air jet holes must point toward the conveyor. Reinstall the end panels by lowering onto the retaining clips. Push the panels tight against the oven cavity and turn the quarter fasteners. When the conveyor is dry, hold the end with the drive connection up slightly and reinsert the conveyor in the oven. Now connect the drive sprocket. Reposition the end baffles over each oven cavity opening. Next, slide the crumb pans into the rails under the conveyor, for extended conveyors only. And install the optional conveyor takeoff shelf. The Impinger 1300 series countertop oven conveyor should not, in most cases, need any adjustment. But if the belt becomes loose, refer to your installation operating instructions manual or call your service agency to adjust it. Let's review our weekly cleaning jobs. We disassembled and cleaned the conveyor belt and baffles and panels and the fingers. Then we cleaned both the inside and outside of the oven, including the air intake vents and louvers and then reinstall the end panels, end baffles, fingers, and conveyor belt. To make the Impinger weekly cleaning tasks easier, there are spray-on soil and grease guards available. These soil shield products are applied on clean oven parts, finger covers, air return baffles, and the inside of the oven cavity. After application, the soil shield product should be dry to the touch before baking food in the Impinger oven. When you perform your next weekly cleaning tasks, the accumulated grease and debris will rinse off with warm water. A new application is then applied and the cleaning cycle is continued. Consult your chemical or janitorial distributor for the names and availability of these products. Be sure the sprockets on the conveyor shafts are aligned properly by checking to see if they're between the links, not on them, and not bunched together. Reposition and tighten the sprockets as needed. Periodically look over the oven to see if any switches, lights, or dials are damaged or broken. Let's review our four times a year jobs. We checked sprockets, mechanical dials, switches, and controls. Now, let's talk about what to do if your impinger oven seems to be malfunctioning. Before you make a service call, there are a few things you should check out. You might be able to solve the problem yourself, or at least narrow it down. We'll look at troubleshooting in the terms of the symptom you observe and what might be causing it. 
You go to turn on the oven at the beginning of the workday and it did not respond by heating up. Always suspect the easy stuff first. Is the oven plugged in tightly? Check the temperature indicator light. Does it show that the oven is heating? If not, see if the temperature control knob is set to the right temperature. You may then need to press the red high temperature reset button. If the thermostat is set right, see if the main fan is working by checking for air movement. If there's no air movement, the fan isn't working, so check the main circuit breaker and the main fan fuses on the oven. If you find a bad fuse, replace it. If the fuses are okay, there's nothing more you can do. Your authorized Lincoln service agent must be contacted. Burnt products result from too high a temperature, too long a cooking time, or improperly installed columnating plates or air return panels. First, see if all the fingers are installed properly and columnating panel holes line up with the holes in the finger covers. Then, check the temperature control knob. If the display shows the temperature is set properly but the products are overcooked, the oven could be out of calibration. If the conveyor control knob shows it's set properly, time it against a stopwatch. Start the stopwatch when the leading edge of the pan enters the oven. Stop the watch when the leading edge exits the oven. If the time or temperature need recalibration, your authorized Lincoln Service Agency must be contacted. In the meantime, you can try to compensate by decreasing temperature or increasing the conveyor speed. Undercooked products can result from several things. First, be sure you're not placing the food product too far into the oven cavity. The leading edge should be just at the conveyor opening. And don't pull that product out of the oven too soon. Next, if the temperature control knob is set properly but the products are undercooked, the oven could be out of calibration. If the conveyor control knob shows it's set properly, time it against the stopwatch using the leading edge in to leading edge out method we used earlier. Again, if time or temperature need calibration, your authorized Lincoln service representative should be contacted. And of course you can compensate by decreasing the belt speed or increasing the temperature until help arrives. If time and temperature aren't your problem, it could be that the columnating plates or air return panels weren't installed properly. If you're still having a problem, see if the main fan is working by checking for air movement. If the fan isn't running, check the main circuit breaker and the main fan fuses. If you do all this and the oven is still not performing properly, it's time to call your authorized service agency. Another situation you might run into is a conveyor belt that won't move. First, check to see that the belt speed control was not accidentally turned all the way down. Check the drive coupling to ensure it's connected properly to the motor shaft and that the drive pin is fully seated in the notch. With the extended conveyor, make sure the belting is tight against the drive sprockets. You may then need to press the black conveyor reset button. Next, check your main circuit breakers and fuses. If the conveyor stopped when the oven was hot, it could be overheating. Check and clean the ventilation louvers and cooling fan covers if needed. It could also be a mechanical malfunction. With the circuit breaker off, so the conveyor belt won't start accidentally, disconnect the coupling. Then gently push and pull the conveyor to see that it moves freely. If it doesn't, look for some obstruction or binding. If the conveyor moves freely, then turn the circuit breaker back on, turn the oven on, and check to see if the motor shaft is rotating. If the motor shaft won't turn, you have to call your authorized Lincoln Service Agency. Periodic cleaning and preventative maintenance will help prevent malfunctions and extended life of your impinger oven. Today, most service agencies offer a reasonably priced preventative maintenance program. We recommend that you contact your authorized Lincoln Service Agency and ask for details. Please remember that when needed, Consulting your operating manual and this videotape and using a few simple troubleshooting techniques can help save you a service call. When you need help, your authorized Lincoln service representative is available. We want you and your Lincoln Impinger oven to keep your guests content for years to come.